In this video, we're going to go back to the South Western Vehicle Auctions, the classic car auctions down in Poole that was held just towards the end of April. If you remember, we looked at 15 of the choice cars that we thought were worthy of review. Um, I'm going to go back now and have a look at actually what they went for, which I think is always very, very interesting, and uh, talk you through all of that. Plus, at the very end, check in on the TR Tony uh, car of his choice. I chose a, a 16th car, which uh, if you remember the video, was um, unexpected uh, and it'll be very interesting to see what that goes for so stay on to the end and see what the price that was at the end let's go and have a look so the first one i want to look at if you remember we uh, wandered around inside the garage is the triumph stag so let me just have a look at that and here just at the bottom of the page we can see actually what it went for and um it was a uh, inca yellow 1973 auto car 142,000 miles not warranted uh, sold for 10,400, uh, which is a pretty impressive price. I think it looked uh, honest and up together and genuine. And um, if you remember the, the actual kind of details of the car, there's a few pictures here. I'm sure you can see uh, quicker than I can, but uh, it was a lovely looking car, very much up together and uh, some great pictures they had online for us to, to look through. So that went for a pretty decent price and um, not bad at all. Interior was brown. I remember that, um, which was great. Uh, again not everybody's choice but it certainly was tidy and looked a nice car under the bonnet as well as you can see with the um, the cooling system uh, put in there such that um, it doesn't overheat and the uh, the Weber carbs as well conversion which is good and uh, uh, overall a lovely looking car on now to number 14 in the list and it was this Mini Cooper uh, 1966 uh, World Cup year uh, Mini. It was a gorgeous looking car, very very uh, straightforward, had a little bit of rust in places but you'd expect that on a car like that. 39,794 miles and uh, was a fantastic uh, looking motor, very original as I mentioned and we did have a good look around that one. Um, we've seen these flying around Silverstone uh, last year at the um, Classic, which was tremendous to see. They've got an enormous amount of power. Uh, must be terrifying being in there. I got a lift to the football club by one of my son's best mates, Billy, uh, a few years ago, and it was quite terrifying, I have to say. But uh, nevertheless, they are fantastic, iconic cars. An original uh, motor had the roof rack on there, as well as the, if you can see the, uh, you can't actually see, but the door levers. Uh, it doesn't have winders or handles. It was just a literally a little pull out switch you had to pull. Um, so yeah, a great looking car, very on and went for a good good price good engine and uh, as you'd expect a very highly desirable acquisition on then to number 13 in a list that we viewed which was the mercedes e320 it was a cabriolet so a convertible roof 1995 so quite a late um kind of year uh, classic car but nevertheless uh, absolutely in pristine condition when we looked at this one just 60,000 miles from you and uh, it was a joy to to, to look at it uh, been in storage for a little while as it says but nevertheless was a, a great looking car out and about with the roof down on a sunny day in the Bournemouth and uh, Camford Cliffs area I'm sure would have been delightful um, sadly when these photos were taken it was a bit cloudy but nevertheless you can just see here the quality of the leather interior I had an e-class like this many years ago and uh, it looks very very similar inside it was good dependable reliable and a lovely classic car going back to the uh, listing it sold for 13,400 so commanded a good price on that um, a, a very uh, desirable car in its own right but 13,400 plus a buyer's premium on top of that from Mercedes E320 excellent and down at number 12 on our list we uh, wandered around this car it's uh, quite an unusual car Austin A40 Sports GD3 1951 32,000 miles on the clock uh, again very honest open uh, vehicle 8,200 was the price that that went for uh, quite a quirky looking car don't suppose it'd be that fast but uh, nevertheless you'd certainly get noticed in this one and uh, yeah was uh, a delight just to be able to wander around I love the registration on this EAG 196 Eagle 96 um, so uh, it'd be interesting to see who actually bought it um, and uh, the registration on that which looks great interior was beautiful as you remember and um, uh, the Austin brand of course proudly displayed on the front bonnet which was uh, tremendous to see so that was the austin a40 and uh, went for a decent price the next car on a list was number 11 it was this rather unusual i've never seen one before auto union 1000 dkw coupe uh, went for 6200 
Uh, surprised it went for so low as that, actually. I would have thought uh, it was such an unusual car. 80,000 odd miles, again, not warranted, but uh, was really interesting to wander around. It was kind of a, a bronzed, orangey, reddy colour, I suppose. Uh, you can see the, uh, the heritage here, the kind of Audi... Uh, that then became Audi, um, uh, symbol on the front of the car, and um, you know was uh, in excellent condition and um, quite a big car in fact. And you could see on the inside uh, quite a lot of uh, interesting gadgets and gizmos. Um, very kind of chic in terms of how it looks with all these kind of uh, kind of plasticky kind of um, steering wheels and knobs and pulleys and whatever but it was a, a very up together car um, I don't suppose again with one liters it was ever going to be raced but you wouldn't want to because it's such a, a a unique nice looking car and uh, yeah great um, prize for the owner I'm sure to get it at that price fantastic now for me lot 46 the Triumph Spitfire 1964 it was a mark one uh, Triumph Spitfire um, known as also as a Spitfire 4 it threw me a little bit I must say because it on the back it had mark Mark 1, but then a 4 straight after. So um, clearly it wasn't a 4, it was a different look and feel entirely. It sold for £10,000, which is a, a very good uh, price. It was a very tidy car, as I remember. Iconic styling and loved those wire wheels. Uh, GHU 84B. Um, I just love the look and the style of this car. It's just so nice. Uh, tight for space for a man of 62. And, uh, well, no, 60, beg your pardon. And six foot two. Get the numbers right, Tony. And uh, so it would have been a bit of a squeeze for me. And there you go. There's a Spitfire 4 um, logo on the back, or badge, rather. Uh, it is actually a Mark 1, but it threw me a little bit with that 4 number on. Obviously got the standard Triumph um, emblem on the front. And these cars were fantastic to work on. The interior looks gorgeous. I personally love the red and black. Uh, that is our brand colour, of course, with Harry the Stag. But um, just looks an amazing car. There you go. So that's uh, the Triumph Spitfire 19. 64 a very good price indeed at um, £10,000 plus a buyer's premium so it looks like there was strong interest in that one and uh, I commend who's ever got it I'm sure they'll have great fun with it now as I mentioned at the beginning TR Tony um, in other words yours truly had his own preference for the 16th car and you'll stay on to the end won't you just have a look at that uh, I will reveal that later on um, but uh, this was a close second in my book um, in our list it's down at number nine but it's the Lagonda the three litre Tickford body drop head coupe 1953 it was a massive car. It sold for 29,000. I'm not surprised. Uh, walking around this was like a blast from the past. Um, here you've got the picture of it with the roof down, which we weren't able to do when we walked around the showrooms with Owen. But uh, the engine underneath was, was huge. It was uh, uh, absolutely iconic of its time and um, just amazing to be able to wander around. From memory, it had the uh, the suicide doors on the front that opened the wrong way compared to modern cars, but the interior was just delightful to see all that chrome and um, chrome bumpering, uh, beautiful paintwork in that kind of navy blue, and it was just class. You can just see, look at the sweep of that rear wheel arch there. Doesn't it look classy? Uh, again, you just cruise around in this all day long with the roof down, occasional rips and tears as you can see but what a car and uh, for me this was a pretty close second to the one that I eventually chose as my 16th TR Tony uh, top car of the whole show and uh, just to go back to the price again it went for 29,000 uh, worth every penny I uh, hope it's gone to a really good home I'm sure it has it'll be well looked after but um, yeah uh, supplying agent Brooklands of Bond Street in 1953 so remember this is only just what eight years post-war that was a class car and uh, a delight to see now down at number eight in our list was the Daimler Sovereign the 4.2c auto uh, 1975 58,000 miles again not warranted they can never warrant these mileage is but it, for me looking around this car it looked beautiful sold for 16,800 plus the, uh, the the buyer's premium of course which was it was a stunning car it was of its time it's p registered as you can see uh, it was class on a stick it really was and uh, a beautiful motor around not an um, ounce of rust or um, damage in it the interior smelled gorgeous with that red leather um, uh, seating and trim uh, looked honest uh, good solid engine in there uh, 4.2 engine uh, reliable jaguar uh, block as you can see and obviously been very well looked after and an up together motor uh, again you know of its time uh, a class limousine that uh, people would have acquired to as a two-door uh, car yeah fantastic and um what uh, what a price to pay 16,800 
commanding a very good price on that. Back in the day, if you had a Ford Cortina, you were somebody. If you had a Ford Cortina 1600E, you were the top dog. Um, 1970, this was 1600E. Beautiful green. I love the colour. In fact, sold for £15,000. Uh, so a pretty decent price for that. It had been very well looked after, this one. We had a good look around it at the uh, the preview uh, video. If we can just have a quick look now at uh, some of the photographs on it, I think you'll see just what a up-together car this was um, and just a beautiful looking uh, car of its time I, I love this it's almost a metallic -y kind of green uh, on the car 1600L and uh, just a, a stunning car look at the interior it smelled fantastic black leather uh, uh, kind of burr wood there finish on the dashboard and on the door cappings uh, a proper family sized classic with a decent engine bay look at that you can eat your dinner off that pretty much and the boot much the same and uh, for somebody uh, Ford Cortina 1600 e 1970 uh, walked away at 15,000 pounds so well done that man or lady congratulations what a, what a great job now another quirky car that we saw which I'd never seen before on, on number six on our list is the Renault Caravelle 1966 so again World, car, uh, World Cup year uh, 14,762 miles uh, went for 11,500 and uh, was definitely a Renault <laughs> that's for sure um, had kind of hints of Volvo almost actually in some ways in certain angles and certain lights but um, a very stylish looking car i've never seen one like it before um and um i guess we'll go some time before we see another one like it again but it was uh, beautifully uh, kept and i'm sure would have been a fantastic purchase for somebody so well done and very close to it in lot 72 uh, was the jaguar mark ii 2.4 l 1960 it was a, a, a dark green color brooklyn's green or a, a british racing green um, and uh, is number five on our list. 15,250 would have got you that. 68,000 miles roughly. Again, can't be warranted as we've said a few times. I think actually it was a executive sale, sadly. So uh, I'm sure it will go to a good home where it will be cherished, loved and enjoyed. Just look at that. That's class uh, on a sticker. I love the kind of white wall tires, the chrome, the styling. It's a proper, proper jag, isn't it? And plenty of space inside. Uh, green um, leather which was kind of unusual it's kind of matching uh, to the paintwork almost uh, interior so you don't often see that but it kind of worked and uh, love the old bench seats and look at these uh, if you were being uh, driven and chauffeured around you had your own burr walnut drinks table to serve your champagne or your uh, canapes on and uh, yeah a classic car with the, the, the leaping jaguar at the front there um, and they had some spare parts for the rear spats as i remember the rear wheel arches uh, so yeah jaguar mark ii 2.4 1960 moving on now to the wolseley 6 uh, 110 1967 43,000 miles sold for 8,600 and uh was a, 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 an up together motor uh, i remember these back in the day these were big family cars that people used to drive around in uh, they could attract quite a lot of tin worm and rust in all sorts of interesting places this one looked very much together f registered and uh, was very very tidy both outside and inside and you can see there they photographed it very well with 6110 across the back uh, leather interior uh, used but certainly very uh, complete as a car and um, just design icon inside lovely horn push here this sort of chrome kind of lever on the steering wheel you forget about all these styles that we used to enjoy back in the day engine looked very tidy indeed and uh, been kept in pristine order and again i'm sure was a great buy for the individual who got that which was fifth in our list and just a little correction there the Wolseley 6110 was actually fourth in our list not fifth apologies uh, moving on into the top three now and we're getting close to the top of the pile uh, Rover P6 3500 with a Rover engine in it 73,000 warranted miles so it was a genuine mile car uh, looked really tidy sold for 6600 and we had a good old wander around this one uh, it was tucked away in a bit of a dark corner actually in the garage so it's a bit tricky to see i love the look of the front of this car with all the um, the kind of fog lights that we used to sport when going abroad uh, across the continent um, obviously been very well looked after and um, was up together with the uh, uh, kind of full kind of brown paintwork and um, you can just see the cream interior here again you know very interesting kind of layout and design 
of the dashboard and the uh, the gear lever here it's automatic this one was and a very compact and bijou engine bay i think you'll see there there's uh, a bit of a mechanics nightmare i imagine trying to service that uh, in situ but uh, nevertheless they did and they were very successful and that is the rover p6 3500 1972 in brown that went for 6600 into the top two now and don't forget i'll be showing you the tr tony favorite at the end of this the car number 16 but uh, this one is the mg pb it was a supercharged car and we showed you that in the preview video uh, very unusual to see a supercharge in such a, uh, a kind of tiny little car 1935 2885 miles i think uh, that couldn't be warranted as we said but look at that price sold for 33,500 pounds plus the uh, the buyer's premium it had been completely gone through it, it was very chic in terms of the definition if you remember we talked about the the light blue wheels in comparison to the dark blue paintwork uh, as i remember looking in the cabin at the steering wheel and the interior uh, the gearbox was actually part of the car so no fancy tunnels when they made this car i love the quadrat uh, octagonal rather almost um, art deco style dials in this car and look at this rev counter with a big <laughs> red line there above what's that nearly five and a half thousand rpm uh, but a car of its time very chic very sweet very open air um, got a great engine in it with that supercharger and there it is you can just see what a monster of a supercharger that was i'm sure that made a big difference to the uh, performance but uh, what a, a bargain that is uh, for those that got the money um, you know it's 33 grand i know but uh, i think in time they will uh, still acquire uh, into the future so it's always a good investment i'm sure but i hope that person will enjoy driving it as much as anything else that's what they're supposed to be uh, these classic cars is driven and enjoyed but sold at 33 and a half thousand and then coming to number one on a list this is a real surprise i've not seen this before as i mentioned this is uh working with you guys it's the first time i've actually looked at how things have gone the ford escort rs 1600 with the bda engine if you remember it had a bda engine it's a mark one 1972 it was a glorious car nearly 80,000 miles lovely example and um had been in the current uh, owner's possession since january uh, 2017 from this it doesn't look like it's sold um so whether there was a there must have been a reserve on it i'm sure whether it didn't reach the reserve or uh, what the uh, interest level was or not i don't know it was a fantastically stunning looking um almost inca yellow in triumph stag terms uh, there is a ford equivalent of it i forget what it is off the top of my head no doubt one or two of you will let us know um and uh, what a car it was it was very original and if you were driving around back in the 70s is um, an RS 1600 was the top notch kind of wagon you could get in the Ford uh, term. Rally Sport obviously is what RS stands for and uh, what I like about it is it's kind of in the original body shell if you will but look at this engine conversion here the BDA engine pumping out some enormous brake horsepower but uh, used for rallying of course and all sorts of um, motorsport events which is what it was designed for but uh, what a great car what a shame it hasn't sold but I'm sure in time uh, someone will uh, uh, go for it and um, acquire it so i'm sure it'll be back at another auction soon now i'm going to jump on and show you the tr tony's top car of the entire show which probably wasn't what you first thought but let's go and have a look and whilst we're here we can scroll up the page and there it is there's a lotus europa series 2 1970 a car that i aspired to when i was a choir boy back in the 70s i'm embarrassed to say um but actually sold well and it sold for 23 thousand pounds these are fiberglass bodied cars with a lotus brand of course uh, i couldn't actually fit in it as you probably saw at the end of the preview film i did try uh, but uh, being six foot two and considerably bigger than i was back in the 1970s a very tricky car to get into very short um, off the ground so almost up to my hip level i don't know how it would compare with a gt40 i'd be interested to know if any of you guys know how this height compares to a, G a ford gt40 gt40 being 40 inches off the ground which is how it's got its name but this car was was beautiful um inside and out uh, got a fantastically tuned lotus engine as you'd expect in the rear um so pushed you down the road real fast and uh, just look how authentic it it was it had had a fair bit of work on it done to a fantastic standard but look at that the lotus europa series 2 for me was my car of the show uh, over and above the 15 that we've shown you and if you want to see much more from the southwestern vehicle auctions at a previous auction we went to then click my next video to watch and enjoy that